Oh, that is fine. Uh, right now, the lines are actually very, 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 very busy. Um, just because uh, we have, uh, we're short staffed. So we only have a few people yeah. that are actually working on uh, uh, at the office right now. And um, Ellie, Ellie's not there today. Elizabeth is, but she's primarily for the testing center. She's proctoring right now. Yeah. And then I don't know who's on the admin side today. So right now the the phone the, yeah okay so oh yeah yeah because I, I I sometimes call the phone the office yeah. sometimes they are, they're so packed and busy that they won't be able to answer your phone call. Oh, you know I'm here. I hope. Of course, I'm I'm again. I actually marked your attendance on my side. Oh okay. All right. So yesterday we got to look at over um, 11.1, which was depreciation using the units of production method, okay? Today, um, again, it applies with the same five components, okay? Today, we're going to be looking into uh, the second depreciation method, which is going to be called um, double declining, okay? So this one, um, it utilizes the same five components, right? It, you definitely need to your cost of asset, Okay, you definitely need an estimated useful life, and you would definitely need a, um, a salvage value, date of when you put it in service, and lastly, the depreciation method you are using. So again, we will be looking into three of them, and for today, we will be looking at the accelerated, or in other words, in this class, we call it double declining. Now, what is the difference between all of these um, different types of um, depreciation methods? Well, yesterday we got to look at how activity method worked, right? It's based on the number of units that the machine can produce. Once you reach that capacity, that is it. That's that, that machine is done for, okay? Now, how double declining works is it's typically towards electronics. Okay, because oftentimes when we're dealing with electronics, we tend to use it a lot more often now than it we would later on. So, for example, I go to school, right? Or you guys all go to school. You guys get a laptop, a brand new laptop. You're going to be utilizing it so much in the beginning. But as you finish school or you have a, you, you have a class that doesn't use the computer, you start using it less. So this is the this is exact exact an example of double declining because how double declining works is you're you have the tendency to use it more frequently and more often in the beginning of its life versus towards the end of the life. So again, an electronic laptop, right? Usually in the beginning of the years, if it's a brand spanking new laptop, you would more likely use it begin in the beginning of the year because um, you know it's brand new technology, right? But as life co continues, you start to not use it anymore. It becomes let you know you use it every once in a while, and then eventually, due to technology, right, it gets slower. You get mad at it because it's not functioning fast enough. So you start you start to end up not using it and end up either buying a new one. So this is a perfect example of double declining. Okay, you would t you tend to use the. Um, asset a lot more frequently in the beginning of its life versus towards the end of the life and the key word here is a, a, a accelerated meaning you're going to um, you're going to depreciate it faster in the beginning okay mm -hmm. so what this entails is these formulas so everything seems the same except for two things your depreciation basis is going to change. Your depreciation basis is all is going to be the beginning of the year's book value. Okay, so again, beginning of the year's book value is going to be your depreciation basis. So remember, every year we calculate at the end of the year, we calculate how much the book value is supposed to be, right? That is the number you're going to transfer over to the second year because now in the beginning of the year, that's what that's the number you're going to start with. 
So you're going to be using, so the, your depreciation basis will always change every single year. Okay, so that's one thing that you need to recognize that's different. Second thing you're going to recognize is the depreciation rate is going to be different. It's not a per unit rate anymore. It's going to be a depreciation rate. And how this works is it's going to be one, like the number one, divided by the number of estimated useful life. So in this case, how old the asset can, uh, how old the asset can last. So for example, five years, seven years, right? Remember that that's an estimated life. Mm -hmm. And you're going to multiply that by two. Okay. Because you're going to, okay. you're going to depreciate it twice as fast. Okay. All the other formulas are pretty much the same. So depreciation expense is going to be depreciation basis times the depreciation rate. And the accumulated depreciation is the same thing. It's going to be your previous years, um, accumulated depreciation, um, uh, plus um, the current year's depreciation expense. And then the book value is going to be the cost of the asset subtract the um, accumulated depreciation, okay? So all of those other two are going to stay the same, okay? But however, the, the three, um, the three, pri the, the primary, the ones that you start off with are going to be different, okay? So again, depreciation basis is going to be the beginning of the year's book value, and then depreciation rate is one over number use of life, useful life, times two. And lastly, depreciation expense is going to be the basis times the rate. Okay. So let's go ahead and dive into this first example here. Here we're going to um, record the depreciation in the first year. Okay. So here we have an asset. It's a machine. It costs you $15,000. Salvage value is $2,500. Useful life is going to be five years. And number of units produced is going to be 10,000. And the date that we put it into service is going to be January 1st. Okay? Okay. So, what is the depreciation basis here? The... Uh Cost of asset minus the salvage value uh, is the depreciation basis, right? No. Remember, this is this is a different method now. We're not using that same method. This time, this time I wrote the equation down here. Your depreciation basis is now your beginning of the year's book value. Wouldn't that be the cost of asset? Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. And what is that the number? 15,000. You're going to start off with 15,000. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Because when you purchase your asset, right, the book value will always be cost of asset minus your um, um, accumulated depreciation. In this case, we never had accumulated depreciation. Because we, we just started. So therefore, your first year is going to be 15000 which is the cost of your asset. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. So remember, this is a completely different new method, David, okay? Okay. So this is called double declining. All right. So now, how do we solve for the depreciation rate this time? Okay, useful life is five years. Correct. Okay, so one, uh -huh. one divided by five mm -hmm. equals... Uh, 30? Not 30. Okay, one divided by five mm -hmm. equals 0. 0.2. 
Okay. Times two. Mm -hmm. I got point four. Forty cents. Forty. Well, this, it's not going to be 40 cents this time because we're not dealing with dollar value. However, this is going to be 40%. So that's a little different, not as much as uh, super different, but you can leave it at 0.4. That is completely fine. You don't need a percentage. But this is just to tell you that every year we're going to decrease it by 40%. Okay? So... Now that we know it's 40% or 0.4, how do we solve for the depreciation expense for this year? Mm -hmm. The depreciation basis mm -hmm. um, times the rate. Word. Okay. 30,000, sorry. I got four different answers here. What are there? Okay, 15,000 times 0.4 Good. is 6,000. 6,000. So I got, Lee got 6,000. I got, Andrea got 6,000. David, did you get 6,000? Yes. Jabran, did, get, get did you also get 6,000? Right. Okay, so, yes. 6,000 is correct. And that's exactly how you do it. You take you take 15,000, which is your depreciation basis, and you're going to multiply it by 0.4. So that means 40% of this asset is going to be depreciated. So we know that um, that means $6,000 is gone. Okay? So what's my accumulated depreciation? It is a lot because you're you 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 you're you're going to decrease it by almost half every single time. That's why it's called double declining. Right. Yeah, okay. you're going to decrease it a lot quicker. Okay, 2, so... 2100? What is 2100? I took the uh, uh, depreciation expense plus uh, uh, depreciation basics. You don't need to add the depreciation add basis. Them. You don't need to add the depreciation. Yeah. So what is the formula it's for accumulated fine. depreciation? David, what is the what is the formula for um, accumulated depreciation? Depreciation uh, 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 previous year's depreciation. And the current uh, 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 depreciation. Okay. So, All right. Um, except together, so this one's six thousand. Right. That's correct. But however, because it's for sure. Exactly. But it's not. It's not the previous year's depreciation expense. It's the previous year's accumulated depreciation. Plus the current Which year's. Is zero. Yes. So. Yeah, right, zero. Good. You guys got zero. All right, so how do you solve for the book value now? 15,000 minus 6,000. Good. To give you 9,000 9, book value. Yep. Good, that is correct. 9, All right, so now that we solve for the book value, right? This is the book value at the end of year one. Okay. But if that's the book value at the end of year one, what can you make the assumption here? That means in the beginning of year two, what is my book value? 9,000. That is correct. So what's going to happen is you're going to take this number right here, right? And you're going to switch it over to year number two under the depreciation basis because at the end of year one, it's the same thing as beginning of year two. So yes. now... Let's go ahead and solve for the rest of the problem. So how do you, what's the rate now? So the rate will stay the same. Mm -hmm. The depreciation rate is going to be, oh yeah, whoops. 40%. Whoops, let's hide that real quick. Yes, 40%, good, <laughs> good, 40%. Now this time, what is going to be 40% of $9,000?
3600 3, Sorry. 3600 okay and then what's the accumulated appreciation now 9600 9600 and then now what is the new book value Oh, okay. So, what what did we start with? Fifteen thousand. We started with fifteen thousand. Okay, so minus ninety six hundred. Mm -hmm. Eleven thousand four hundred. Uh, That's too high, David. Five thousand four hundred. Yes, five. Exactly. What are you What are you looking at, Andrea? <laughs> I don't know. I got lost for a minute. Okay. Okay, so I'm still at the de um it's too the high expense currently. See the fact that's thirty six, right? Okay, thirty six hundred. Yes. Okay. Depreciation expense. And then what is accumulated depreciation? What's the formula for that? Accumulated is previous year's accumulated depreciation. Which is six thousand. Six thousand. Um accumulated depreciation plus the current years. Um Depreciation expense. Okay. So, the previous year, wait, wait, wait. Not so, so the previous year. Wait. Okay, 6,000. Correct. Minus. Not minus, we're adding. Oh, plus um, the accumulated. Oh, wait a minute. I just got lost again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, I still got fifty-four hundred. You're right. Got fifty-four hundred. Yes. Oh, you're right. Okay. So wait, wait, wait. Andrea is oh, still working. Yeah. No, 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 no. David said eleven thousand. Sorry. Yeah. I I'll start using uh, names now. Oh. <laughs> Why is it too high? <laughs> okay. Okay. I do the accumulation depression. Uh, uh, accumulated depression. Uh, too much. So. Okay, so again, Andrea, a, the, the previous year's accumulated depreciation is what? It's 6000 Okay, and we're adding the current year's depreciation expense, which we solved for how much? Oh, uh, 3600 Exactly. So yes. add those two numbers go. together. Yes. Yeah, I got it. Good. Okay. Now we need to solve for book value. We start with the asset cost, which is what? Uh, 15000 and we're subtracting the accumulated depreciation, which is how much? Which is 9,600. Correct. Which is 54,000, uh, 55,000. Uh, I should write out these uh, uh, equations. Yes. 5,400. Okay, good. Right. Don't worry, you guys. We have the equations at the end of the slide, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, yes. Yeah. So, again, good. So, now, the third year is going to start off with $5,400. Okay? So, again, um, I already went ahead and solved it for you guys. Okay? Oh, and I like it that. I like that because you did all the work. <laughs> <laughs> so, I solved for year three and year four. Okay? Oh, okay. And what was my salvage value again? Uh, two uh, two thousand five hundred. Two thousand five hundred. Yeah. Here on year four, if you notice, let's go ahead and look at the look at look at the information here. I have my depreciation base. My depreciation basis is thirty two forty. Okay, so I haven't reached my um, book my um, salvage value yet. But when I depreciated it, I depreciated by an extra 1296 So that's my ex depreciation expense. When I add that together to my previous year's de accumulated depreciation, I get a total of $13,056. Uh, mm -hmm. And I subtracted it from the 15000 and I get 1944 which is what? 
if I at my end goal is to get to two thousand five hundred, but in this case it is way too low. Right. So what happens is you cannot use nineteen forty four because our number one rule here is your book value ca- cannot ever be less than or、uh, can never be less than salvage value. Okay. That is the number one rule. So if we kept calculating and we reached the fourth year, right, and we're like, you know what, this it's still going on. No, you cannot absolutely go beyond、um, the salvage value because no matter what, where you're given into your asset, whether you used it three years, four years, whatever it is,、mm-hmm. you cannot, you cannot go below salvage value because that's the amount that. That asset is worth that, and that's it. You stop there, okay? So what happens is because I can't use nineteen forty four, I would have to reverse and do the math again, okay? So here I and I made the ending balance to be t- um two thousand five hundred, so therefore I had to reverse my equation. How do I get to twelve? To what? How do I get to two thousand five hundred? That means my accumulated depreciation must be equal to twelve fifty. Okay, and then from there, I need to calculate how much accumulated. De- I mean, how much depreciation expense it takes to get to twelve five hundred. So in this case, we're going to be working backwards. So I start with my equation as my book value is two thousand five hundred. If I know my equation is book value is going to be cost of asset、um, minus my accumulated depreciation, then I would flip and reverse it. So if my book value is supposed to be two thousand five hundred, and I know my asset cost is fifteen thousand. I'm gonna reverse that, and I'm going to get the number, um, uh, uh, twelve thousand five hundred. Right? That's how much my accumulated depreciation needs to be. And then, if I take it one more step back, accumulated depreciation is calculated by the previous year's、um, accumulated depreciation plus your depreciation expense. So if I know I have to get to twelve thousand five hundred, I'm going to have to do reverse operations, and say that twelve thousand five hundred is my end goal, and I know what my previous is. It's eleven seven sixty. So I'm going to subtract eleven seven sixty from my twelve five hundred to get my answer of seven hundred and forty dollars for my depreciation expense, and then from there. I stop here. I don't depreciate any more because I can't go beyond the salvage value. Okay, so that is something that you need to be aware of when we reach past salvage value. Okay, so we'll go ahead and look at some、um, examples so that we can solve it together. Okay. Okay. So yes, and if you notice here, I've highlighted for you that notice that one. The year you ended on year four, you never even made it to year five. Why? Because we're depreciating the asset twice as fast now, so therefore, it's going to have a shorter lifespan. Okay? okay. Second thing that you're going to recognize is every single time you deal with a depreciation basis, the number will always change. Okay, your number will always.、Um, Be your book value for the previous year, okay? Or be for the for the current year. Previ at the end of the end of the book value is going to be、uh, pulled over over here. So remember that it's going to be the beginning of the year's book value. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. The rate will never change. So if you solve for one, it stays constant the, through the whole thing. Okay, so for for this equation only, okay, we solve that. We already know that the depreciation rate is going to be one over the useful lifetimes two, 
Once we establish that, that's going to be rinse and repeat. It's going to be the same over, over, and over again. So we know that we the depreciation rate will stay the same. And then, of course, your depreciation expense will change. And one thing that you need to know is at the end of its life, okay, whether it's five years, four years, whatever it is, you need to have your salvage value equal your, um, the book value must equal the salvage value, okay? Okay. So even though we didn't take this to five years when it says that that was the, the life, mm -hmm. we can, because we would have thought had to change, um, depreciation base is that why we had to stop there? well we had to stop there because we couldn't go yeah okay <laughs> i was getting a little confused about your question because you answered your question <laughs> yes because we never we because we never reached to the fifth year because the whole purpose of double declining is you're getting you're you're depleting i'm not depleting you're uh, using your assets more frequently in the beginning of the years. You're 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 cutting its life in half almost every time. So, do you think that has the potential to last up to five years? What if it lasts longer than five years? There is no. It it will never. It will never go beyond its useful life. I can tell you that. Why? Because you're depreciating it every every you're depreciating almost half every time mm -hmm. so think about it there's no way that it can go beyond the five uh, whatever five or seven years whatever whatever the useful life is because you're cutting its life in half every single time mm -hmm. or i'm not sorry you're cutting the value the the cost of the asset in half every single time and on top of that our depreciation basis is no longer asset cost minus salvage value it will always be the beginning of the year's book value, okay? So that's why okay. knowing, understanding that concept right there is that you're starting off right off the bat with a low number every single time. Every single time, it's almost cut in half every single time. So okay. the more you keep depreciating it, the more it becomes less and less and less. Okay. 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 So yes, you will never, ever, ever see um, it when you're using double declining that you'll never, ever see um, the asset go beyond its estimated uh, life. Okay. All right. So you, you, you answered your question already you, yourself? Yes, yes. Okay. So yes. Once we reach to four, right, because it cannot go beyond its capacity or uh, I'm sorry it cannot go beyond its uh, salvage value so that's why we have to stop there reverse right. our transaction because okay. we can't so in the beginning what we we we, we try to attempt to decrease it by 1296 we can't go beyond that far because you can't you, you wouldn't be able to so we had to change it to become 740 okay, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and look into how we actually depreciate this asset. Okay, so at the, at, um, at the end of the first year, record the journal entry for the, um, for the depreciation of the machine. Okay, so at the bottom, I, I you know, had the table there for you. So we recognize that we started with 15000 we depreciated by 40%, which gave us $6,000 depreciation expense. And our accumulated is right now currently 6000 So what would be my accounts? And what would be... Depreciation. Depreciation. Good. Good. Yes. It would all stay the same. Okay. However, the only difference... Yes. However, yes, yes, because it, it is essentially the same the same concept, except if you're just learning a different way to, to measure it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this case, here we recognize that it's 6000 on both sides, depreciation expense. And again, when we move on to more, uh, when we move on to Coffee Cafe, 
you're gonna you're gonna have to recognize accumulated appreciation and you're gonna have a dash with whatever asset that you're um, uh, decreasing okay? okay so good good all right um and then this is for the second year i already i don't know why i already did it but i already did it ahead of time so the second year um you would fill in the same exact journal entry except for it's going to be for year two and what's going to happen is you're going to um you're going to journalize it for thirty six thousand dollars so remember your main hint and goal is going to come from the table that you've created and right here depreciation expense you've already calculated ahead of time so that's all you need yeah. to do you need to take that number and put it in there in the exact location which is depreciation expense it's pretty straightforward pretty it's given to you okay So every year the journal entry looks different, okay? Mm -hmm. Now let's go ahead and talk about partial years because again, we just recognize that, um, we just recognize that the first example, right? The first example we, we, I'm sorry, let's go back. The first the first appreciation method we looked at, right? It's not time sensitive. We don't care about the time that is it's placed in or we don't care how old it gets, right? It's as long as it reaches its capacity, which is the number of units that it can produce. This time, yes. double declining is actually time sensitive, as in the timing matters. And why does timing matter? Because um because again assets have a lifespan and how the lifespan works is the day that you put it into service is when the day that you start depreciating it okay mm -hmm. so if i so for this example here right so i may be depreciating my asset right but if i have only owned it for half a year why do i need to depreciate a whole year's worth that's not that's not that's not fair because my asset's not even a year old yet. It's only six months old. Mm -hmm. So this is where it comes to play and it's very time sensitive because as you guys remember from the previous um, from the previous um, example, it never reached five years old. It only reached four years old. Four. So it's mm -hmm. very sensitive to time. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you make sure that you recognize this, okay? So the very important factor here that I want you to keep focus on is to make sure the date that you put it in service. What day did you put it into service, okay? Because okay, that is going time. good, and that's going to um, that's going to affect how you calculate um, the depreciation, okay? So here we have an asset. Um, and it costs you ten thousand dollars. Its salvage value is two thousand five hundred. Useful life is five years. Number it can produce is twenty five thousand, which we don't care about. And lastly, date that you put it into service is going to be October fourteen. Now, because it's done in October fourteen, what do we need to recognize? October. October. October is the uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, depreciation depreciation date oh so, uh, three months okay let me see what what made you come to the conclusion that you need to depreciate october uh the first half uh, uh one through uh, uh one through 15 is uh you, you know you take the full month of october and the last half of the 16th through the end of the month you skip to the next month. Ah, oh, yes. Good job, David. That is 100% right. And yes. And because we've we barely hit that 15th number, we made it and we have to depreciate that month. So we need to include October, November, and December. So good. Good. Okay. So let's go ahead and start recognizing this problem so 
what is my depreciation basis? Okay, so we're going to try to do... Cost of the asset? No. Awesome. No. No. Oh, oh, shoot. I, okay, I messed this one up. It's not supposed to have that. <laughs> I thought you were trying to help us out. <laughs> I am, but I just realized I, I'm human too. I make mistakes. Oh, I know. Okay, so this is wrong. It's actually supposed to be beginning of the year book value. Oopsies. Uh, there you go. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up. Okay. So what is the depreciation basis now? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the book value. Yes. And how do you determine book value? From the previous year. I mean, from the... Um your ending book value for the previous year. Did we have one? No. 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 Use, well, we no. used the cost of asset, right? Which is ten thousand. Exactly. So good. What else is what? How do you solve for the rate? Um, the depreciation rate. Seven thousand five hundred. Um, no, we're focusing on the rate right now. Okay, there's five useful, five years of useful life. So one divided by five. Oh, I'm supposed to, oh. That's it? No, 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 you're right. I just forgot to add the times two here. Okay, yeah, and then times two should be the same as what we had before, which is 40%. 40%. Yes, 40%. Good. And then what else? How do you solve for the depreciation expense? The rate times the 10000 should be 4000 Yes, that is correct. Okay, that is correct. All right. Good. Okay. However, what did we forget to do? Um, uh, we haven't solved for accumulation depression yet. Nope, 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 nope. We can't move forward from this because what does this 4,000 contain? What? How much is this? That's for the whole year. It is for the whole year. That is correct. Yeah. How many, how many, how many do we need to actually calculate for? Eight months? Excuse me. I'm sorry. Three months. Three months. Okay. So you have an option to do this. You can either change the rate or you can actually de change the depreciation expense. Okay. Um, you can do the rate. It's, it's, it's not as easy because you're going to be dealing with a, a bunch of decimals. Um, the easiest way to recognize it would be your depreciation expense. So if I were to take $4,000 and if I were to multiply it by 3 divided by 12, so what is that, one fourth? Or? Yeah, a quarter is 0. 0.25. Yes. Yes, it'd be 0. 0.25. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, can you call me back in a while? Okay. So, again, we, are, we can't use $4,000 because that is one whole year. Okay. So, what we're going to do is now we need to, to we need to, we need to, to either divide it by okay. the, the, the by 12 so we can right. get a monthly uh, depreciation. The school should be done in uh, October 8th. 
And um No, I'm sorry, August. August. What's what's going on? It's on the front of the load the thing. Okay. okay. So it's either we take the depreciation expense and we can divide it by 12 so we get a, a, a monthly depreciation and multiply it by three because we're only finding out we only need it for october november and december or we can just do or we could just keep the the uh we could just multiply it by a quarter which is three out of 12 months we could divide this we could do, just divide this in four or we can uh, multiply it by 2.5 percent and you should get now a um, thousand dollars for the remaining of the depreciation expense for that first year because in the first year it's only three months old you can't you, you can't depreciate it for a whole year it hasn't reached a whole year right okay because we okay. Mm -hmm. so what it would be for a year you're saying to divide that um, Of the four thousand, mm -hmm. you said you're dividing the four thousand by what? It depends. You can. There's multiple ways you can do it. Now, my the question is, how many months are you actually looking for? For how many months are you three. actually depreciating? Three. And how many months are in a year? Twelve. 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 So you can take four thousand, and you can multiply it by um, 2.5% because that is tw that is one fourth, right? Is 2.5 uh -huh. uh -huh. or you can divide it by four because it's your, you just only want a quarter of a year, right? So you could just divide the whole thing by yes. four. Okay. Or what you can do is you can divide it by 12 so you get a monthly rate and then you multiply it by three. Okay, but in this in this case, it's easiest to just divide by four or to multiply it by two point uh sorry, point twenty five percent, and you're going to get one thousand because four thousand divides into four evenly. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's, that's fine. Yeah. So here you can either right here, um, multiply the three and a half. I'm sorry, 3 out of 12, which is 0.25, and you can either multiply that by the, um, um, uh, multiply that by the 4,000 to get 1,000. Okay. okay? Okay. So now that means we only depreciate for $1,000 because it's not even old enough for, it's not even one year yet. It's only, it's only three months old. Three months. Okay. Yes. So now we have the new adjusted value. What do we have? What What is the accumulated depreciation? Okay, the formula for accumulated depreciation is previous year's accumulated, accumulated depreciation plus my current year. And so we don't have a current previous year. year. A previous year. Uh, so it'll just be the same. Yes, a, if you, exactly. Oh, I guess I didn't solve that one. I should have solved that one, but yes. So if it is 1,000 here and it becomes, you're going to subtract 1,000 from 10,000. So that means... The new basis that you're going to start with is going to be 9,000. Yes. Yes. Okay. So here, again, uh, I didn't solve for it, but I, sh I should have. Um, but in this case, uh, we're just going to go ahead and move forward. So here, we're going to, it's asking you to journalize the first year's depreciation. Um, so for the machine. So again, what are my, what are my accounts and how much am I depreciating? Um, accumulated but uh, uh, depression uh, expense. Uh huh. Accumulated depression. Uh, depreciation. Uh huh. 
Yeah, for a thousand each. A thousand each. That is correct. Good. Good. All right. And that is it for this chapter. See, all you need to do is just make sure of your formulas, okay? So, again, here is the formulas for you, okay? We got the beginning of the year's book value, okay? And then we got the, oh, oh, I put per unit rate. Well, it's going to be one over useful lifetimes, too. And then the uh, depreciation expense is going to be basis times rate. Then the accumulated depreciation is going to be previous years accumulated depreciation plus current years depreciation expense. Book value is going to be cost of the asset minus accumulated depreciation. And a few things that you need to know. Double declining is based on the estimated useful life of an asset. So it is time sensitive. Okay, so make sure you guys know that. And the purpose is to expense the asset um, uh, more in the beginning of the years and less in the others. And then lastly, book value must equal salvage value. Cannot be less. Okay. Definitely something you need to have and make note of. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that is it for this chapter. Okay. So again, make sure you pull this up because we will be doing the exercises in a bit. So, um, 